All right guys, we're back again, running the sawdust burner for the second night in a row. I put about twice the charge in it that I did last night, and uh, I tell you, it's like clockwork. I've got twice the stack temperature, or twice the temperature on top here. So right now, we're running at 650 degrees on top of the stove. Down here at the bottom, I can leave my hand on that without getting burnt. Out here at the exhaust, we are running a 222 degree exhaust temp going out the wall. That's pretty efficient really when you think about it, how much heat we're actually trapping in the top of the barrel that it's radiating versus what's going out the wall. So I've made a hell of a mess in here. I gotta get it cleaned up, get these boards on, and this will heat a lot better once I do that. But uh, so we're gonna let this run. Tonight I'm actually burning sawdust that was fresh off the sawmill from logs I had it in a barrel so it hasn't really had any air get to it to dry or anything like that but uh, trying it out to see if it would burn nothing but sawdust from green wood and I tell you what it's burning phenomenally really well I also I don't know if you could see it I added a little plate here so I could control the air it's a little butterfly plate and that works really really well so we may just leave that as is so anyway Stay tuned, I hope you enjoy it, and I will see you on the other side of it. Oh, if I were my bit, if I were the screws, where would I be? Do-da, do-da. I can't find a damn thing all the do-da day. Haha, -ha, look at you. I don't know how you guys let this place turn into what it is. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Too late to claim ignorance as to why the wind blows through here like a picket fence? Probably not. You guys can't tell where these boards have been, living outdoors. Friggin' December. And it's been raining here non-stop all day. Craziness. Ah, look at you. So beautiful. Well, we're finally closed in in the forge, so that's a good thing. Always a good thing, but uh, it's nice in here right now. That thing's running about 350 degrees right now. Stack temp's about 140, so that's not too bad. That's after uh, I've had it burning all evening. I got home from work, first thing I did was fire it up, and I put about double the charge in it as what it had the last time we were here. Uh, would have been last night. Um, tomorrow night, as long as all goes well, I'm going to try to do a full charge on it, see how long it goes. Um, that little peephole I have in the top, it's just a 3 8 hole drilled down that I can look through. I'm going to be cutting more out. Like I said, I have a uh, boiler inspection plate in there. I think what I might do, I think what might be a little handier for me, is put something I can easily take off of there 
and knock the sawdust off the sides. I'm noticing now that it's down near the tail end of its run that the sawdust, a couple inches of it actually stays kind of stuck to the outside and it just kind of smolders there. I notice the next day though when I go to open the lid, check things out, every bit of sawdust is turned into ash. It's burnt right up. So that's something um, I think that would be kind of handy just so I can get a little more heat out of it while I'm out here working. Um, I had a suggestion to do a couple things to make it so I could feed it while it's burning. Unfortunately this just isn't one of those things you can do that with. Uh, if I had a auger set up something like that, a little different style, which who knows, maybe we'll make something someday for it. But as it is right now I'm pretty damn happy with it. I mean. To get an entire evening's worth of work out here and have heat the entire time from lighting something off once, not even on a full load, that's, that's pretty good. And I figure uh, the way it looks, now I've seen people throw figures out there that they're getting you know, 12 hours burn out of them. I don't see that happening, not on this. What I see happening it's probably a good eight to ten hours with a full load of sawdust on and that's pretty good I mean you're gonna be out here working anyway that's more when the forge is going and this room finally closed off the forge is gonna generate enough heat to really kind of keep this place heated up pretty well for me it's more when I'm grinding and things like that and we're gonna be at the bench a lot grinding this winter on tools and you need that little bit of heat to keep your fingers from freezing and your balls from falling off or freezing to the side of your leg because that happens around here often. But uh, I'm going to take you guys over to the whiteboard because I've had some requests to kind of write this down on there so exactly how it works. All right, let's see how well we can see this here. So first off, let's look at the barrel itself. I don't know why we have all this grinder dust on here. Now, the outer barrel itself is, let's get the right end here. So we're looking at, let's see, I'm trying to make this so you guys can see it all. I'll start from this side. Don't make fun of my drawing skills. Alright. Yeah, I guess you guys can sort of see that. I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, so... Total height on this is 56 inches. Our barrel width, outer barrel is 24 inches diameter. If you go to the inside, get you turned here a little bit. So we our inner burner, inner barrel, listen to me, can't talk. Now this outer core right here is something like 22 and a half. So this is the inner barrel here. 22 and a half inches that sits down inside. And I have uh, 3 8 threaded rod pegs about six inches long each that feeds in there, and that inner barrel right here sits on top of it. So this guy right here is about 20 inches wide. And it's actually more than that. I apologize. I believe is 23. So this would be somewhere, I want to say around 22. These are rough, guys. Real rough. I'm kind of guesstimating, but 
So that leaves me with an inch of airspace all the way around this inner barrel sitting inside of here. So what happens is, I'll do an inner... That guy is two and a half inches. That's the hole in the center. And so what happens is, we have our fresh air intake here. It draws up through here, through that inner barrel. Goes up over the top of that inner barrel. Comes around. It circulates around the inner barrel. Then it finally goes out. I know I have an eraser right there, don't ask guys. It goes out that inducer assembly and out the wall. It's really simple. There's not much to it. The inner barrel on one side almost touches the lid of the burner and then we have a kind of a reduction cut. So kind of have a, let's get you zoomed in a little more. So we have a, a lip two inches cut all the way around this. And that kind of helps instead of the exhaust just pulling over the back side right out and not taking the heat off of it, it forces it to suck it down and draw it around that barrel out to the inducer setup and out. I hope this is making sense. I'm not always very good at drawing it out and explaining it because I never do drawings or anything when I make anything. So this kind of all comes out of my noggin. So from what I was watching on these burners, a big thing is... Uh, big thing if you want to get the heat out of it is to get that get the top of the inner barrel pretty close to the top of the uh, the outer shell itself um, just having that inner barrel it's amazing how much heat it keeps from the outside shell but it forces all the heat to the top of that thing and it actually does not get very warm around the sides of that the hottest temperature I have on the sides when it was running at 750 earlier the hottest temperature I had on the outside was like 350, a little bit closer to, uh, closer to the top. Once it gets down to where the inducer assembly was, the hottest temperature I had on it tonight was like 230 degrees. It was perfect. And that was, I mean, the thing was running over 700 degrees at that point. It's amazing how much heat it's actually removing. Now, if you get much below, you get below 200 degrees, you're running the risk of condensing which yeah you're removing all the heat off of it but at the same time this is not made or designed to be condensing what will happen there it will end up rotting it out and we don't want that when you're burning wood wood type products a good hot fire because you're trying to burn all the volatiles off the hotter the better that's really what makes a lot of wood stoves inefficient is because you'll never burn that wood hot enough to burn everything off of it. You need like a 2,000 or 2,200 degree fire to actually burn everything that can combust in that smoke and everything. That's what makes the masonry heaters really good that you see. It's an old European design. I still want to build one someday, but who knows when we'll ever get to that. But um, those you burn hot enough to actually burn all the exhaust, the gases and everything off before it goes out the chimney because it's all masonry. It's kind of neat how they work. You guys ought to look them up sometime. It's pretty damn interesting. But uh, anyway, that's her. That's what we have. I hope I explained it well enough. It's so damn simple. I can't even convey to you how simple that thing really is. There's really nothing to it. If I put a stack on it going all the way up the building, I would not need that inducer set up at all. But for me, I had it. I've had that thing kicking around here for years. I had the materials to make it. And so for me, it makes sense to do it that way. It saves me probably to run a chimney with the price of the pipe. Probably run me a good thousand dollars to run what I need up to the roof on here. 
this thing didn't cost me a dime. The only thing I have into this is welding rod and grinding discs. That's it. Um, as I said in the last video, and I don't, I hate to keep harping on it, but it is the world we live in. If you build one of these things, guys, it's on you. I'm not going to tell you to build one. I'm not going to tell you not to build one. I can tell you so far, I'm very impressed, very happy with it. It's only been running a few times, but I can already tell it's going to work well. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you on the next one.